Right, welcome back viewers to another edition of Heads Up. I've had a, sort of a short siesta of about three or four weeks. Good to get back into it. Great, good to see you. Looking healthy, looking fit. Well, fitish. <laughs> and um, had some good racing the last few weeks, haven't we? And uh, some big announcements. Well, little sort of interesting announcement, like the Warriors coach running for cover. Can't blame him, I suppose, getting the sack. Um, but Leith Innes, gee, what a, a big announcement that was, was at uh, Eagle Farm. A couple of weeks ago, top rider, big call to make, but what a way to go out riding a group one winner, group one winner with a, a 10 out of a 10 ride, perfect ride. Yeah, great to see, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. And um, I know a lot of people were surprised by the announcement. Um, mm. Knowing Lee reasonably well, I wasn't totally surprised, but great that he uh, went out on top. He, and more importantly, goes out pretty healthy um, and, you know, yeah. He's got a lot of living to do and he's got a few business interests that I'm sure will keep him busy, but I'm sure you'll see plenty of him on the golf course as well uh, in his retirement. He loves his golf, as we know. Yeah. So, no, it was, it was a fairy tale result. And, um, yeah, I can, can confirm he has uh, withdrawn his license, uh, uh, rider's license, so he is not going to be making a comeback anytime soon. It is final done dusted so um great to see leith gale on top and and i'm sure you and i off the top of our heads could think of many good rides that he's uh delivered for the punters and we've been on and and just um he was that big time rider wasn't he and, and we yeah. needed to, uh, a cracking ride invariably he would and, and to do that for the people that have supported him so much over these last few years brendan and joe Lindsay. um i'm sure it was like the perfect send off. So, yeah, we'll miss you, Leith, but um, I'm sure we'll, we'll see you around the traps. He, he was, like you say, he was, when you put the money on and the big money was up, nine times out of 10, he would give it the perfect ride. He, he would know the horse, horses not to follow and horses to follow, put it on the right spot. And um, like a Ajon, Agon, when he won the three year old uh, Karaka Millions, what last year was it? Yeah, before yep. last. and um, just a, a perfect ride, and he was determined to win that race too. It was great to see. I know boys get paid were on the other horse, but still, you had to give it to Leith, didn't you? Just a, a ten out of ten ride and, and a great race. So uh, did his homework, obviously, and um, yeah, like like his golf, I suppose, it was pretty good. So um, yeah, the, we've had the rugby over the last two or three weeks. I've actually enjoyed the rugby at the moment. With the semi-finals coming up on the weekend and the quarterfinals last week, I'm getting pretty keen on the Chiefs. I was going to go last week, but uh, Mother Nature decided to jump on its way then. I missed out on going there, but what chance to get the Chiefs on on well tonight? Uh, tonight, isn't it? Yeah, tonight. Yeah, they head down to the Crusaders yeah. uh, home ground, where the Crusaders at home and playoffs, as we've all heard throughout the week, are 25 and 0, so never been beaten in a playoff game since the inception of Super Rugby 27 years ago. Always well, the first time. Yeah. Exactly. There is. And remember, they did win down there in the round robin. Admittedly, the Crusaders then went up to Hamilton and beat the Chiefs up there. I give the Chiefs a chance, Neil, actually. I do give them a chance. And definitely an eight and a half start is, is pretty good, I think. So if you're wanting a bet in that game tonight, that would be my suggestion. Um, but... I hate to say it, neither of those teams will win the final. Okay. We'll have to wait till we get to the sports selection part then to find out what your definite thoughts are on, on that then. Okay. Now, tomorrow we've got a maybe a meeting going ahead at Trentham tomorrow. We've got a really heavy track with rain forecast tomorrow or today and tomorrow. And um, what do you think the track's going to be? What, a 150 for a 1600 meter track? Uh... Oh, gee, that's a good question. Probably 152, 154. It's slow going, oh, shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I believe there is thought that there is uh, yeah, concern over the meeting and mm -hmm. whether it does go ahead is still uh, up for grabs. So, yeah, I guess what's the space that will play out in the next 12 hours or so. So yeah. we'll, we'll carry on and preview yeah. the races on the assumption that um, it does go ahead. Just one little thing to consider, and I'm sure trainers are working this out as they go. So, Hara yesterday 
I think it was put up as a heavy 10. And then the rain started coming. In the old days, that, that track would have got down, downgraded to a heavy 11, and that would allow trainers to scratch on the basis of a track downgrade. Yeah. With the new track rating system, you can't go any lower than a heavy 10. So, um, yeah, it might have potentially caught out some trainers, although, as we know, only three races were run. But, yeah, just, just a little uh, quirk of the new system. So um, I'm sure trainers will work that out over over time, but yeah. Why can't we have a like a heavy ten plus? So you know, New Zealand is a unique country and totally different from Australia track conditions. Just have a heavy ten plus, or just something to indicate that it's heavier than a heavy ten. It just seems ridiculous to me when you're guessing how heavy it is. Well, the reason is Neil, because we want to. Uh, what's the word? Mirror Australia. So you can see now, if you go back and look at a horse that might have had four or five wins on dead conditions um, back in the day. Yeah. Now, maybe two of those wins might be classed as good and three of them might be classed as, as soft. So mm. even the historical records have been altered to reflect these new, um, uh, any, well, I guess you do have fast but good slow a good soft and heavy tracks oh for the sake of australia whether that's the right or the wrong decision uh the technology part of it also is to mirror theirs with this new sns system so yeah i, I hear think, what you're saying but i guess the powers that be thought we need to mirror australia and and run with how they do it and make it simple for their punters um and as you probably know australians bit more on new zealand racing total than what New Zealanders do. So yeah. you could argue it's it's uh, to meet the market, but I hear what you're saying in terms of the nuances of, of New Zealand uh, tracks is, is something. But to me, it leads to still having an edge. Um, you know, now with the con condensing of the conditions where there's only really three categories, so that yeah. slow one, you can, you know, big difference between a, a five and an eight. So if you can yeah. see actually on eights, the horse is, handles eights, but you know, they get run off their feet as a five. Yeah. And yeah. Their, their soft track form suggests that, you know, it's not very good because they've mainly been running on fives, but yeah. they might have one run at and an eight. So you can you can find an edge. You've got to turn everything into a positive, Neil. Yeah. I agree. I agree with that. We have to mirror Australian racing for the punting turnover. They they turnover more than than we do don't we in our country on our racing which is is that right yep yep so there yep. you go but but why can't we have for the punters sake punters aren't stupid and Australian punters aren't stupid if you know a heavy track heavy 10 is is they're running 120 like a trend rather be 123 124 have a heavy 10 plus or just an indication on the love racing website that it's greater than a heavy 10 just so punters know, it just seems ridiculous not to have the information there in hindsight. Um, or well, you could argue. Future. You could argue why information. Don't have, well, why don't we have a horse performing on a rated two track, a rated three track, a rated four track, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten? So they, they condensed it into these categories. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess that's supposedly for simplification and to mirror Australia, but. Yeah, there's, you just have to probably do, uh, you know, that's where if you keep your own database of track conditions, you can you can see, you know, you might rate tomorrow as a heavy 12. So you categorise all the form from this meeting as a heavy 12 track, mm. whereas the the official databases will just show it as a heavy track. So it could be a an 8, a 9, a 10 sort of thing. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I, know, I, I hear what you're saying. I just, yeah, I... Obviously, I have no input into the decision, but you just got to hopefully, you know, use it to your advantage where you can. Yeah, even even just a time like a one twenty three track for twelve hundred meters. Everyone knows the times for twelve hundred meters, or most punters do. The got any nails about yeah. them? Um, to have an indication on the Love Racing website, one fifteen or a one fifteen to one eighteen track, just an indication. Anyway, we're rambling a bit, so um, okay. <laughs> Now, I'll just them. Let's, let's do this race. Race five is a damn good race. Just ask me, $2.20. Is he a racing certainty? 
No. I agree. What can beat him? I, uh, Alan Sherrick would be the best trainer in New Zealand at placing his horses. Mm-hmm. And I think it's relatively well documented that this wasn't on this horse's uh, program. He was you know, running last week. He's backing him up seven days later. It was a late nom, obviously, small field, claiming four uh, to 58. So, yeah, I, I look at this. I think Chase is as good a horse as a Musée Moir. That's my take. I think those two horses are pretty much on a par. I warned you and about you, drinking on this show. You don't think uh, Chase is as good as a Musée Moir? I, I, we'll see you tomorrow, I suppose. <laughs> if they could beat him by the same margin, at, at giving him four kgs, if they beat him by more than... Okay. I, 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 yeah. So if, if, if a museum mark can beat Just Ask Me at level weights yeah. with um, two good jockeys on board, I don't think uh, Just Ask Me can beat Chase with originally eight kgs and now obviously with the inexperienced apprentice, the, the difference drops to four, yeah. but you, you, you're still taking that into account. And we know he's not the easiest horse to ride, just ask me. You know, he needs to be yep. worked up, stoked up um, often. So I'm I'm all over Chase. I think he is a very, very good bet tomorrow. He loves Trentham. He loves the mud. He's in it the right way. And he's been galloping super since last start. I just think he wins this race. But you're going to go right outside the square and tip one outside of the top two. I think cart number six, Carpe Diem, is, is the one to beat them. I, I think um, his last three wins, he's carried 52 kgs every time he's won. What is he carrying tomorrow? 52 kgs. And he loves a deep, heavy track. He won in 147, I think, at Awapuni over a mile. And he won here two starts back over 49 metres, beating a, a horse that Alan Sherrick thinks is a pretty one of his best horses he's ever had, Ladies' Man. So how good is Carp Carp ADM? I think um, maybe not a win bet, but yeah, $9 is good money. But I thought for the top three, uh, $2 something, uh, he's, a, he's a great bet. But maybe the, the bet is the back chase and, and Carp ADM Carp to beat, just ask me. And ka-ching, ka-ching, hopefully. But anyway, hopefully the race goes ahead tomorrow and we can find out. Probably just ask yeah, me exactly. kick their ass. Probably just ask me or kick their ass, I suppose. <laughs> well, he's definitely got the class edge, but I just think yeah. you know, big swing in the weights and um, yeah, hey, ladies' man should have won that race. Let's be honest. Last start. No, oh, I don't know. Carp had him knocked off. I reckon. What do you think? What do you think it should have won? Well, I just I think got out a bit late from memory. Um, no, it got out. I, I thought it had its chance. It just. Did you? Definitely improved. Right. I, I, thought, I thought Carpe had him knocked off and should have won by a bit more, but I don't know. Interesting race tomorrow then. Gee, crikey, Dick. I could see a chocolate fish coming. Maybe two chocolate fishes. Well, uh, speaking of chocolate fishes, we've got a long-standing chocolate fish bet rolling that we had maybe in March, I think, from memory. You're breaking you remember up. The... You're, break, you're breaking up. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to remember that bet. Will the Warriors make the top eight? Oh, it's a long you way to go. yes. Long way to go yet. He's sticking with them. No, oh, Stacey Jones, top trainer, uh, top coach. He could turn them around. Never Are you up. sticking with them to make the top eight? It's too bloody right, crikey, Dick. <laughs> you, you say I need to be taken off to the bloody movie then. Uh, no, nah. uh, I've given up watching the damn team. But anyway, Stacey Jones, a legend, and uh, but he's been there a while, so I don't know how much yeah. effect he will have. But you never know. Miracles have happened. Never do know. No. On, on a positive, we'll swing back to a positive Monday. I think Paul Nelson and Karina McDougall, five winners on the program at Hastings. Amazing. Four of the uh, jumps <clears> wins. <throat> um, that was pretty uh, great achievement there, wasn't it? It was just, um, even to get two or three wins on the same day, but five is just an outstanding feat. So well done. And did you back any, any one of those winners out of, out of your back pocket? Yeah, I did actually. I, yeah. I backed. Uh, Quite a few of them. Yeah. So it's a good day. It was a good day. A, I think good, Ned, a, Wynn, a, Ned Wynn will go through the grades. Motivation. Yep. Motivation. I do um, like that. Yep. Motivation will have to be placed right. I don't think you'll see motivation running um, at the likes of Trentham and, and jumps races. It needs probably 
slightly better track conditions than what Trentham will likely present in July. So yep. it's it's a good good horse as well. And uh, no tip. Well, you know, that could be anything. But I tell you, the, the, the one race that they didn't win over the jumps was won by a horse called West Coast. Yep. Now that's a serious jumper as well. He sure that's is. That's a good horse. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, plenty to look forward to in, in the jumps uh, over the next few months. Yep. Now, you want to touch on another piece of racing news that um, came out, I think, last Wednesday. Wurrimu Pin. Oh, yeah. Mm. For five months. Five months. I think most people know what for. But... Um... He's a good, really good, well, he obviously knows a really good rider. I hope he can get himself sorted out. He's what, only young, 21. So we've got about 10 minutes to go. I'll just got a little pop-up come up. Um, yeah, so what are your thoughts? You, I know you're involved with him quite a bit. So what do you think of him? I I get on very well with Rumu. I think he's yeah. a very intelligent um, young man. Obviously, you know, just on the very odd occasion. It's a, it's a tough game, isn't it? Like, you're right. You know, I could look up. He's probably ridden in four or 500 races. Oh, no, he had a bit of a break. Probably 300 races a season. Yeah. And he makes a couple of mistakes. And that's what people remember him for, for the two, not for the 298. Good one. Yeah. So um, he will stay in the game. He's very committed to um, good. Good. putting his head down, working hard. And he's already counting down the time to uh, get back in the saddle. So um, he'll be back. He won't be lost to racing. And, and I think you'll see a, a very um, bigger, better, or well, won't be bigger. He doesn't have much weight on him. He doesn't have, he's one of the few jockeys doesn't have to worry about wasting. But you'll see him continue his rise in the jockey ranks and, and he'll be one of our best in another couple of years' time. Yeah, I could see him going overseas at some stage if he puts his head down and just knuckles down and, and listens to the right people. Like yourself. Um, right. Uh, last heads up question was what? how many um, times did Indicator win the Rudder Royal Cup? And the answer was? It was four times. Amazing. Uh, amazing, uh, yeah. amazing horse. Love the mud at Errol Park. Uh, how many winners? How many correct entries? One, two, three, four, five, six. Give me a number between one and six. We'll go last cab off the rank, number six. Bruce. Bruce in the Deep South. He'll be happy. Long time That's subscriber. Down there, Bruce. Uh, this week's question. Yep. Is good question too. Well, we all know uh, the big race in Australia tomorrow is the Stradbroke, and it happens to be 30 years since that amazing rough habit performance where he weaved his way through the field. Literally, I think he showed Jimmy Cassidy where to go rather than the other way around in that race. Um, super horse, rough habit. He could win on off tracks, good tracks, over 1,400, 2,000, 2,400 miles, didn't matter. How many Group 1 wins did Rough Habit accumulate in his career? So, Yep, and it was yeah. more than one. 027-352-6402 or formpro at formpro.co.nz um, by Tuesday night. There were two sports books that I've I love to read. One was Steve Williams about Tiger Woods. And the other one was about Rub, Rough Habit. Uh, just an amazing book. I remember John Wheeler saying it was just the difference between Rough Habit and, and another horse was it's just his will to win. He wanted to go out there and just win every time. So regardless if he was fit or not. So he had a lot of Group 1 wins and we'll find out next week how many of those were. Right. Um, just a quick mention. We've got the Silver Collar on. Sunday too, the big dog race, looking forward to that race. I reckon Thrilling Row can beat the favourite at the jump and win that race Ooh. at five bucks. Big no, call that. No it's keeper no can get yeah. yep, five bucks, get on to it. Um, sports bet? Sports bet, definitely, yep. Looking forward to that. This is on Saturday night. Give us a run Saturday down. night, Blues, Brumbies, semi-final, Super Rugby, Blues minus 12.5, $1.87. I will, and the Blues will be winning the Super Rugby final, regardless of who they meet, whether it be the Chiefs or the Crusaders. Uh, I just think this Blues team is right in the zone. Too many attacking weapons. They'll score plenty of points. They'll put on at least 40 on Saturday night. So I can't see the Brumbies scoring more than 27. So I think the Blues will, will win this game very comfortably. 
right. and host the final next week and win that as well and and put an end to the misery of the Blues fans who haven't had a title since 2003, I think. So that's, what, 19 years. Yeah. yeah. How much difference has Tui Vasa Sheik made of the team, you reckon? I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the oh, way he's playing. Yeah, yeah, no, it was a nice try he scored last week. I think his mm. work ethic, his professionalism, um, you know, he's obviously highly talented, highly skilled. So, mm. no, it definitely made a big difference, I think. But that team's just firing right across the park, so... Yep, get on the Blues to cover that start um, on Saturday. The Brumbies, you know, they only had three. They they lost three games in a row, then beat the Hurricanes, where the Hurricanes literally snatched defeat from the jaws of victory last week. Yep. So, um, yep, no, they don't have a match. They don't have a hold a candle to what the uh, Blues have in terms of uh, across the park class. So uh, get on the Blues. Just quickly, Neil, we'll yep. finish on. We've got a few minutes left before uh, the Zoom meeting kicks us off. The TAB app, beat brick bats and bouquets. You want to talk about the TAB app? I think you need to get this off your chest. <laughs> Just annoying. Yeah, I thought they sorted it out, but I tried to get on yesterday, actually, on the app, and this comes up with a white screen. You had to delete that, download the app again. Same thing happened again. Did it again, was able to get on. Um, then you try and watch the race, you watch the race through the um, link, and then you got to put up, we'll see the preview of the lead up to the race, you got to put a bet on, and the screen enlarges and you can't shrink it down with your fingers, and you can't put a bet on, so it just defeats the purpose of having the app, just frustrating, and you've got to go through the through Google, through the website to get that sorted out, um, so just frustrating, and anyway, what, what's your experience with it? Part, it's been pretty good. It's improved a hell of a lot since it first changed over, but what are your thoughts about it anyway? I don't use it. I don't use okay. the app. If no, if you I'm the app then. I'll just use the website. <laughs> yep. But I, I did have a conversation on Monday with one of the board members of the TAB who suggested they were well aware of the issues with the app and they were yeah. in talks with the, the company that um, obviously developed it and that they've got this 10-year contractual arrangement with. Mm. And I think they've put the put them on notice that if it doesn't improve, uh, they, they will be exiting that contract early on the basis of um, you know not delivering. So okay, fair enough. If, yep. if they don't up their game um, and that doesn't improve, then I think TAB will be saying enough's enough, and and we're we're leaving early and and moving to a hopefully a better performing platform. So just a bit of update there. Yep. But yeah. Couple more winners for viewers in Queensland. I think Sharp and Smart's a good bet in the Judge Atkins and in the Stradbroke. 11 and 11, he's, he's won over 49 metres, the Magic Millions of the Gold Coast, in 120.5. Just got up the hard finish, um, peaking nicely for that race, paying five bucks. Hugh Bowman, I think, drawn nicely, heap of pace. I think he'll bury them late at Eagle Farm. But, um, I've got one more thing too. Anything else you want to mention before I mention that? Um, what about the fearless one? What do you think about him? He's not a bad horse. Why is that? Oh, it's the fearless one of Robbie Patterson's. Yeah. That's in, I'm just trying to find the race. Uh, that's in tomorrow, isn't it? I've had a close oh, look at that race. He's not a bad horse, though. I, yeah. yeah, I'll be keeping an eye on him. Okay. Just can't. He's training well, isn't he, Robbie? He's a damn good trainer. Race, race three, the Brisbane Cup, number seven, six dollars. Oh yeah, yeah. Don't say it and tell you. Okay, right here. Um, watching the trots last night it happens week after week at Addington. You watch it. Have you ever noticed on the upper right hand screen they have the sectionals, which is great. I think it's a live feed from the um, sectional database they have. Well, computerised there. But when Matt Cross calls out the sectionals, they are nearly always different from the quarters shown on the screen. I got if I know why. It just defeats one's wrong. Uh, which it one's does. Right. It's ridiculous. The reason why. Hmm? The reason why I'm pretty sure Matt Cross has a man um, up in the box with him, yep. who is obviously hand timing the sectionals, and then he puts a bit of paper in front of Matt. You know, say so he'll say thirty one point two. So Matt quickly looks down at the appropriate time. And guys, they've gone through the first quarter in thirty-one point two, but everyone on TV sees the the screen uh, saying thirty point eight or something, and yeah, it doesn't look good. So, 
It's dis- yeah. discredits the sectionals. It just seems ridiculous. One of them's wrong. Obviously, the hand time one is more likely to be wrong. So anyway, just watch that next time you see the races there. It's annoying. I don't know why they do it. Okay. Um, anyway, good racing tomorrow. Trentham, the Royal Carca, 10 races. There's a couple there I like. Going to have a decent track by the looks of it. Showers forecast, and that just seems to compact the surface. Um, State of Origin was on the other day. How long got it? A minute to go. Well, less than a minute. Great game the other day, wasn't it? Did you stay up for it, or did you fall asleep? Nah, too late. Too late for me, Neil. You know, I'm, I'm a hard, I'm a hard stable worker these days. Yeah, I got to be up right. at five o'clock. Oh, that late? Shivers. Oh, crikey. Yeah, good on you. Okay, thanks for watching, everybody. Good punting, and uh, watch Carp DM chase his ass tomorrow. Hey, okay. <laughs> no trouble.